general elections. Mshoka, as we fondly knew him, had successfully conducted elections in the Mpakasi East, a station that he had served from April 2022. Before his last tour of duty, Mr. Mshoka had served at the IBC for 10 years, having first been appointed as constituent election coordinator for Kilome constituency in 2010. He was later transferred to North Hall in 2013, Machakos Town in 2015, and Kajiato South in 2017. The IBC family mourns a distinguished, capable, and competent officer. Mr. Mshoka was a very effective and professional election official, an amiable gentleman, a family man, and notably an outstanding patriot who has paid the ultimate price in the course of executing a key national duty. The IBC and the country have lost a huge resource in a man who had become a highly dependable electoral manager. In the first half of the last century, Ernst Hemingway wrote a novel titled For Whom the Bell Tolls. It is a sad tragedy that in this country, the answer to this question seems to be that the bell tolls for the election officer of the IBC every five years. I ask and I wonder, why must an election officer be murdered after every general election? Whose gods do we anger by performing our sacred constitutional duty? Which earthly deities do our good deeds and duties so grievously offend? Five years ago, we lost our ICT manager, Chris Musando. A week ago, we have lost our returning officer, Daniel Mishoka, who now lays before us and the nation. Their only crime is that they serve this nation diligently and honestly from their workstations at the IBC. Is Kenya's political rivalry and brinkmanship worth the life of good men like Mshoka and Musando before him? My fellow countrymen and women, we cannot continue like this. We cannot make working for IBC a death sentence a place where honest professionals will shun. Our job is to prepare a register of voters, not to prepare a register of our murdered staff members. Our job is to prepare for polls, not to be prepared to be poll bearers of our murdered staff. It defies logic that with the sophistry and technological capabilities that criminal agencies have, they have not been able to resolve these mysterious murders of our staff. It's time that these agencies lift their constitutional, statutory and operational calling and conclude investigations to see these troubling, tragic murders resolved. For as long as these murders remain unsolved, they will not only create an environment and culture for, of intimidation, but they also embolden the impunity of the perpetrators, perpetrators of these heinous acts. Serving an IBC, such a vital institution in our constitutional order and democratic framework, should not be an inherently hazardous occupation. If the staff and the independence of Kenyan's institutions and commissions are not vehemently protected, the institutions will decreasingly attract honest and talented men and women of integrity, which will have disastrous consequences to our democracy. My fellow countrymen and women, if we do not stop the bell from tolling for IBC, 
the bell shall surely toll for all our independent institutions and the country at large. Kenya is not a failed state, and we must refuse to believe that ours is a country where the rule of law can be suspended at will during the election period. In the interest of justice and for the sake of the families of our slain staff, as well as our institutional interest, as IBC, we demand a comprehensive statement of the state of investigations of these murders. The abduction and execution of IBC officers such as Mashoka, whom we mourn today, fits into an unfortunate pattern of harassment and intimidation of IPC staff. In this general election, the abuse of staff reached a very unimaginable scale. In an incident never witnessed before, Commissioner Professor Gulea, Commissioner Molu, and Mr. Marijan, the CEO, and myself were physically assaulted and injured at the National Styling Centre, that's at the bombers of Kenya. These shameless attacks amounting to election offences were perpetrated by, among others, persons regarded as national leaders in the full view of the whole nation and the whole world. To date, no one has been arrested for crimes committed against senior constitutional office holders seen live on national television. Further to date, I'm yet to hear of any human rights group or the defenders condemn the heinous act that occurred at the bombers of Kenya on 15th of August. If the leadership of IBC can be attacked in public, where there was heavy security, one cannot imagine, one cannot begin to imagine the peril of the IPC staff suffer or go through tucked away in the corners of the country. I call upon the Inspector General of Police, the Director of Criminal Investigations, and the Director of Public Prosecutions to move with speed to investigate and charge the perpetrators of these election offenses which were geared towards subverting the will of the Kenyan people. IBC staff have suffered physical body attacks, threats to their persons and families, intimidation, and lawful arrests that can only be termed as abductions. In Elda's constituency, a presiding officer, Mr. Mohamed Kanyare, was shot by assailants, leading to amputation of his leg. Kanyare is still in hospital, and we wish him a quick recovery as we take solace in the fact that his life was spared. It must not be lost to the nation the little of wars that some members of the IBC and staff have had to suffer in the course of their duties. We have been subjected to extremely negative ethnic profiling, irascible and unrelenting cyberbullying in the social media, including the creation of phantom and fake social media accounts of returning officers. We have suffered incessant verbal abuse and harassment from some politicians and their henchmen. We have faced planned attacks and at polling stations, telling centers, where lives and limbs have been lost. My fellow countrymen and women, this scorched earth mentality to electoral processes that is perpetrated by leaders does not sit with an aim to sound a democratic practice and order. It gravely offends common human decency. It deeply undermines our sense of humanity and self-respect. It's wrong. It is shameful. It must stop. Elections are not and should not be war. They are merely a democratic device for choosing our leaders. I wish to most sincerely thank from the bottom of my heart and from the Commission, brave members and staff of the Commission who gallantly defend democracy in the face of adversity. <laughs> Men and women who choose to still march on for liberty when turning back was a more comfortable and safer option. Those who stood up for virtue, even as they tempted by, they were tempted by corrupt individuals masquerading as leaders. I shall look the commissioners and staff who exhibited uncommon valor when our ideals as a commission were put to test. For the sake of our country, 
we must continue to hold the line. For this is the true price of freedom and liberty. And if anyone thinks that the IBC will cut and run, they are mistaken. We are acutely aware of our constitutional mandate and the oath of office that we have subscribed to and pledged to discharge to the best of our abilities. To the family of uh, Daniel, Mrs. Tabi Dambolu, the young children Prudence and Isaac, the parents Mr. and Mrs. Mishoka and Zuki, and the entire family, on behalf of my family and on the behalf of the entire IBC family, there are no words that can diminish the laws that you feel. But please receive my deepest condolences and those of the Commission and take comfort that Mushoka died defending its ideals of independence and impartiality while serving this country to the best of his abilities. Indeed, your husband, your father, your son, your brother died a hero. Be assured that his legacy is safe, his service deeply appreciated and forever recognized by the Commission. The world may take little note, but to us, Mushoka is one of the unsung heroes of our times, where honesty and integrity is not a common virtue. Yes, the bell may have tolled for Mushoka and Musando before him, unless the Inspector General of Police, Director of Criminal Investigations, and DPP put an end to these crimes at every general election. Through immediate and conclusive action, the bell shall surely toll for this country, its democracy, its constitution, and its people. May the soul of Daniel Mbolo Mushoka rest in internal peace. That is the message from the Commission. I now wish to request a uh, hand over a condolence message from the Commission to a member of the family. And uh, as we said, we request that we be allowed to, uh, to go back to Nairobi, where we have uh, other pressing duties to do. And thank you, the people of Mala, for coming in large numbers uh, to console with the family, Asanda Sana. Yes,